then well, yeah. Anyway, I'm sure I'm sure you can explain it. Make sure to make it really confusing, because all messages from me should be extremely confusing. I have no idea who's attacking me. There's only ten of them. Who the hell could possibly be attacking this caravan? And it sounds like orcs. It's orcs. What is with this bottom right hand corner glow? Try your best. Ah, uh, just, just harass him. Don't actually tell him anything useful. He'll figure it out. I already told him all the things anyway, so he should. He should be fine. And I know he's editing his level, so I wouldn't mess with it regardless. Yeah, it's kind of business as usual. Adam always has trouble with the little finicky things like this, which is totally exactly how everything's supposed to go, right? Like, if if he was more technical, he wouldn't need me for the project. So, just doing my job. Let's take a look here. And it's also probably just some crap with Perforce, like... Well, actually not Perforce, it's probably Unreal, to be honest. Hmm. Who do I want to give the kills to? Well, I'd like to just, like, shroom up my dude and have him just go murder everything. So why don't we just do that? We'll just give Bernard super mushrooms of combat and just let him go kill kill the world by himself. I mean, these are orc warriors. God, I'm, I'm just, like, running up and attacking orc warriors now. Like, no fucks given. That's, that's where we've gotten in this campaign. Oh, he's only got the most heavy armor in the entire game. I'm sure that's not going to be a problem. Smacks him with hammer five times. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> They're even running up there now, aren't they? Well, Zakar can go up there. He can fend off fucking anything. Yeah, I'm straight, Torsten. Where are these guys? Torleaf is... That was only 20 damage. That literally is nothing. Ruthard the Legend, go do your legendary things, sir. Orcs, Orcs in the Forest. Sounds like a children's book, to be honest. I mean, not a very good children's book, but, you know, a children's book, perhaps. Can we eat the can we eat the mushrooms? It takes six action points to eat mushrooms. Ah oh, come on. It doesn't take six action points to eat mushrooms. You just shove them in your mouth and swallow. Granted, you might need something to wash it down with. 
Maybe that's the thing he has to actually, like, because they can be kind of dry. Like, if he dried out the mushrooms before he was going to take them, yeah, that, that could kind of, that could be difficult to swallow, you know? It'd be like if you, if you just took a whole spoonful of peanut butter and tried to swallow it in the middle of combat, it probably would just, it wouldn't really go well, would it? Like, I mean, it's good fuel and all that, but I mean, just, people might look at you and be like, what the hell are you doing, like, digging into a bottle of peanut butter, a bottle of peanut butter, yeah, a jar of peanut butter in the middle of, middle of a fight, like, and of course, the only courte courteous thing to do in that situation is to offer them a spoonful of peanut butter, because, I mean, well, if they're, if you're gonna eat something, then, well, you might as well you know, share with your fellow fellow people on the battlefield. And then you're all sitting around trying to like swallow some peanut butter and nobody has any water because they're in the middle of a fight. And it's just a bad time for everybody. I mean, you'll laugh about it later, but just, just, eh. <laughs> peanut butter will give you more energy. I don't know, um, they're... Depends on the peanut butter, and also depends on the mushrooms. So these guys, we are... Yeah, see, if, if you're having trouble with those orc warriors, get some two-handed hammers. And if you can't get any two-handed hammers, because they cost $3,000, um, don't... Fight the orc warriors until you have three thousand dollars to buy super awesome anti-orc equipment because they will wreck your face. This looks like a time for Werner to start uh start eating that peanut butter. How much? Yeah. Why is this guy, like, now stepping back onto the battlefield? What is he doing before? Visiting his... The hammer... Yeah, those hammers are ridiculous. Like, to actually get one, they're, they're basically one of the best items in the game. Because not only... Not only do you have to have somebody who can afford them, you actually have somebody who can also use them, and... That's, that's the other problem, is most all the other hammers are pretty crap damage and awful, but then the two-handed hammer is actually amazing at everything. So you don't have any guys leveled up to actually use the damn thing, so when you get to actually purchase it, you're like, but, but why would I buy this expensive hammer that nobody can actually use? We cannot use mushrooms because we are engaged in melee. Well, fuck you guys. Can't he just deal with it? I mean, he is just bossing it up over there. He doesn't give a damn about who's surrounding him. Like, he's surrounded by the two toughest, toughest enemies face-to-face -face in the game. Pretty much. And he's bandaged up like he is actually injured. And he just doesn't give a shit. Good thing we got Ruthar the Legend to back him up. It's like a like a story. It just writes itself. It's like poetry. And if you don't get that reference, that's something that George Lucas said every time in interviews when he was making the freaking prequels. And holy shit, we're actually getting into trouble over there with that guy. Alright. We need to rotate him out somehow, then. It means one of these guys needs to get in there. 
Not you. Not you. But you. We'll get you out next turn. We just can't do anything. Can we can we get around? Okay, we can get around at least. Oh shit, he needs to get rotated out immediately. Still tired. Hammers for Christ's sake. Yeah, yeah. Hammers of all things. Get out of there, man. Yeah, that's why you're that's why you're paid the big bucks there, Torkoal the understudy. You're a champion. Crush him. Crush him. Man, Bernard is just he's gonna he's gonna fucking bleed to death. Uh, we need to get him back to one of the archers here. Do they have bandages? Yes, they do. Yes, they have bandages. One of them does at least. Alright, good. Thank you, God. I didn't want to have him bleed to death because of some awful coincidence. Well, Mr. Bernard, can you please not die somehow? That would be quite helpful of you. We are going to save in case we need to just, like, run the hell away from a fight. We'll at least have, um, if you save and reload the game, you can skip a bit, a, l a little bit of time. The donkeys immediately start moving, and sometimes that makes a difference. Because the longer you're on the road, the more, the more chances you are of getting messed up. Alright, having reached Thalberg, we... We are now good to go. Alright, let's sell all the things. Wow, they have tons of tools here now. Well, let's get some. Let's get some. Two fifteen, two hundred. I'm actually gonna sell a two hundred hat. I'm gonna sell both of these hats. What the hell is going on with this playthrough? Alright, let's take a look as well as the armor. I don't see any amazing gear. Nope. Let's take a look at their people to hire. Nothing. Nobody good. I mean, we just have a deserter and a mason and the rest there. Anything of the weaponsmith? I don't think there's anything that they have that I... Yeah, there's nothing new, so everybody already has their best equipment, literally, in the game, besides awesome things. Okay, so... Greenskins seem to have been around a long time. We have a number of them running around Kopdorf. They're burning everything. They come across killing everyone. That's quite obvious. I need you. Okay, let's talk money. Kill marauding greenskins around Koppeldorf. Alright, that sounds fair. So Koppeldorf has marauding greenskins, which is totally fair. Uh, well, I will be right back. I need a very short break, and I will be right back to go kill some greenskins.
Right, let's get back to this. So basically what I think we want to do right now is we want to get down there, but our guys are a little injured. So let's take a look at him real quick. He doesn't have any actual injuries though, he just is hurt. So that's actually not too bad. So we're going to run down to Triton Walk and buy more dogs, because dogs are basically like our emergency switch, like pocket sand basically. Dogs, same thing. That's how I see them. And just fishermen in this small town. I mean, it's a... The Iron Brotherhood. Man, those guys sound really cool. And we're never going to take those frickin' geists out, are we? God, six, seven geists over in this, this damn little tomb over here. That's insane. Seven. Anyway, we're going to camp out here until morning and see if we can buy some more war dogs. Yeah, let's get them. You get a war dog. You get mushrooms. Alright. You get a war dog. You get a war dog. What are days when they are at home? Geists. I would say, what's a deist when they're when they're uh, on holiday? But I guess that doesn't make sense. It, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty. Good. We'll, we'll accept. We'll accept, accept the joke. All right, everybody's got dogs. Hey, but we got two more. We got Dash the War Dog who has armor. We're gonna we're gonna get him in there. Can't we can't leave Dash. Can't leave Dash out, and we got we've got two dogs with the same name. Okay, that's just unacceptable. We're gonna have to murder one of you. We can't have dogs with the same name. I've been over this. Gerhard is a hound master. Well, uh, okay. So, how close are we to healing this man? Not very close, and we have even more to um, repair. So we have 13 tools. Yeah, it's going to take a while. So let's just chill out. I could head over to Eulenburg, maybe. We're looking for Hedge Knight. We have been looking for Hedge Knight forever. But now that we actually have like 18 bajillion dollars, our search for a hedge knight is not just a fruitless search for a hedge knight that we can't afford, it's a search for a person that we may actually be able to buy. And the last hedge knight we bought, I think we just got him killed immediately. So maybe this one would do better. And alas, no hedge knight. Any good armor at least? No, just all junk. That's just a lot of junk. And nothing here either. Alright. Alright. still healing and repairing so just do nothing you the Thalberg company is over here yeah that makes sense you find Hurston nursing a rather large tankard next to a fire in fact it's not a tankard of all at all but a wooden bucket filled with ale Torsten has become a drunkard like, shit, that's how I'm feeling. First Baldwin went down, then Humbert. I know there's been at least five or six others. It's just dead men coming from me. Dude, they haven't died in a long damn time. You're just... You're just a moron. Was that Torsten? So he gets plus 10% damage. Minus 5% melee skill. Minus 10 range skill. Expect him to drink heavily before any battle.
Well, shit. Torsten, your melee skill now sucks. I mean, it already wasn't great, but damn, dude. Torsten, I am not happy with you. Not happy in the slightest. And this is a this this is what goes for a horde these days. Look at these pathetic weaklings. They don't even have a warrior between them. You think you can you can get us with arrows of that magnitude? He's shrugging off your attacks. One of the good things about having helmets on all your characters is you don't have to look at how ugly they are. Because I can guarantee you all these guys are ugly as hell. Let's move. Let's get up there. Let's mess these guys up. And the reason we're releasing a dog there is basically because we've got the extra dogs and we're trying to speed up the battle a little bit. Because this battle is going to be probably pretty short and we just want to throw out some distractions and then just rush in there and murder everything. It's more of a convenience dog than anything else, to be honest. And if you've ever eaten a convenience dog, you probably microwaved it because that would be convenient, right? Probably didn't taste very good though. Oh no! Dash the war dog is dead. Don't worry, we got a backup Dash the war dog, so we're not gonna cry too much. Just a little. These goblins are just covered in grass and they, they're trying to look like snipers. They just don't. They always... Man, they just really hate Torkoal the understudy. Probably because he went to college. And these goblins and orcs, they never went to college. They just went to like... They dropped out of high school. And they're really resentful about it. You went to higher education? Me no like higher education. So we're going to keep rushing in there, keep releasing a couple fluffies, and we're just going to murder these guys. It's fine. We're not going after anything crazy at the moment. We're just, uh, we're just doing what we do. God, yeah, they really... God. I always underestimate the enemy's ability to kill those dogs. They just murder him in like two hits. Shit. They must have nerfed. They must have nerfed him at some point to what they had been. Because I can't imagine them always being that awful. Like both levels of dog. Like, why have two levels of dog if literally, like, it really doesn't matter if one has armor and one doesn't? Yeah, Annette? I don't give a shit about Annette. I'm gonna kill you anyway. And that's why you get Steel Brow on all your characters. Because these guys are gonna be firing arrows at us. And if we didn't have Steel Brow, one of them would get some stupid lucky shot and murder our guy. It just... It happens every single time. So just, just don't leave home without it. If you can help it. Just get Steel Brow. It's not about min-maxing, it's about not spending the next 12 hours getting another character up to the level that your character was because they died because of some stupid lucky hit because you were playing in 
optimally because he just wanted to get through a fight. Nice shot. Oh man. That critical though. Let's catch him. Let's get that guy. Let's get him. Well, it's good to see Adam actually getting some work done there. He's been so slammed with Bob's Burgers, I've been worried about him just like getting lost in, getting lost in the Bob's Burgers work forever. Those screams are so good. Alright, we got him. Easy as that. No, oh, no, we got this guy. Yeah, it's it's nice to actually finally be able to do things. Excellent. We have we have them. So there are four dire wolves. I mean, four dire wolves. That's nothing. We'll just we'll just take him out. It's not a problem. Crap. There's We're just gonna get out of this get out of this fight real quick. Can I just reload the autosave? Yeah, we'll we'll just reload the auto autosave. That's that's not a fight we wanna take. It's just it's gonna take too damn long. Yeah, just like, that's stupid. Like, the Coppeldorf Militia already have that handle. There's no reason to fight that. It's gonna take like 10 minutes to resolve it. Like, yeah, screw it. Sure, we can get some kills. I, I don't care. I don't, I don't want to deal with it. Alright, so we've got. Yeah, we're actually selling off chainmail. How insane is that? Take a look at the people. A rat catcher. Well, we don't need the rat catcher. So let's take a look at what our guys actually have right now. Uh, and Torsten has leveled up. Torsten is max level, pretty much. But he is a disappointing max level character. He's an apprentice. You'd think an apprentice would have turned out to be a little bit better. We are disappointed. We are disappointed in Torsten. He could have been good. He was meant to bring greatness to the Zakarians, but instead he has brought mediocrity. Kill marauding greenskins around Coppador. Alright, we'll find him. I believe they're to the south. Here they are. An orc warlord. Are we actually fully repaired? We're not fully repaired. No, we are we are most definitely not fully repaired. Uh 
I'll just run away. We will fight them during the day. Let's let's take them on. It's fitting to have the screams. Yes. Look at that. Okay, it's an entire cadre of warlords. I mean, of uh, warriors. You know, one of those W words. Everybody's got armor. Well, this is a good reason why we have war dogs. Because we're going to be using them. We will most certainly be using our war dogs in this fight. Shamelessly, in fact. Shamelessly using our war dogs. So why is Torkel last? Torkel is last because he is nimble? Whatever. Well, let's get started with all the shenanigans. Do it, doggos. Do it. That's not really where I wanted you to go. Yeah, that was bad. We don't need all these dogs to die for us. Nah. We got we got plenty of them. Might as well use them, right? Yeah, especially when we're taking some damage with poor leaf. We should we should just deploy the dogs. Levy on Mars. Levy on Mars. Yeah, they're gonna get confident. They're not gonna run away. We need to just. We need to just start deploying the dogs. Get them out there. Go forth, my friends. May you be prosperous in your battles. I don't count on it, but you can try. I like how they're like wrapped up in leather armor. Kind of like it's a little scarf just around their neck. It's kind of cute. Oh, damn. Cunibird. Nicely done. Torleaf doing some work. 
Damn! Jesus Christ. One hit, really. Oh, shit. It is amazing exactly how fast these dogs are dying. It is near, nearly as though these, um... These orcs are, um, a little bit tougher than orcs we've faced in the past, actually. It's surprising. It, it actually makes me believe we might be facing a new class of orc warrior. Um, uh, maybe a, another level version of them, because we've never had this much trouble against them before. And I'm not really sure why we're having trouble against them. Because we've been deploying dogs and doing all sorts of crap. I am surprised. They're, they're just incredibly accurate compared to what they normally are, and that accuracy is doing damage. A lot of damage. Where's that Coderino? Coderino? Yeah, I was doing uh, work earlier today. You can, you can catch it on the previous stream or on YouTube. Uh, we were working on uh, the camera controls and stuff like that. We, we got some basics in there. It's kind of crap. But, um... For this next week, the big push is going to be getting the camera in there properly. And things like that. So we're not doing coding right now, because just kind of chilling after a long week of doing a lot of work. That whole thing. Watching, yes, it is true. Well, I'm sure I will be on tomorrow. Doing more, doing more of the codes, sir. That is definitely what I'll be doing. But if you still have any C++ questions, you can always ask them. I will do my best to answer, even if I will not look at the documentation while I'm playing games. I may also answer incorrectly. That may also be on purpose. I cannot guarantee malfeasance, or the lack thereof. The AoE damage is not actually killing them, though. Maybe I should be more specific. Damn. Yes, this is this is very much true. Uh, UTF-8, definitely. By far, UTF-8 is what we've used on almost every project. It makes, you know, like having an 8 character with encoding just works for a lot more things. And surprisingly, most of the time, even if you don't actually support UTF-8 officially, or whatever, like, you, you don't actually support the the multi multi wit part of UTF-8, it'll still work for everything that's English or whatever, right? So it'll work even when it shouldn't work, which is handy in you know development where you don't always have perfect control over everything. But if you want perfect compatibility, UTF-16. Because Microsoft. Come 
my guys. Thank you, Torleaf. That is very much appreciated. God damn it. What can I do with Cunibert? Besides run away like a... Yeah, Cunibert, just get out of there. Man, this fight has gone south. It did not need to... It did not need to be like this. Okay, so have two different classes, one for normal ASCII, which would be useful in internal text manipulation, one for UTF-8, which would be used for all user-facing code, or one for both cases. I don't know why you would ever have, like, normal ASCII versus UTF-8 in the same project. Like, pick one. Like, either you're going to go with normal ASCII strings, or you're not. And that's usually kind of an outdated question. You should just go with, you know, you should go with WCHARs and all that stuff if um, you're actually trying to ship in multiple countries and do all that. Just do it from the beginning. Because if you're using strings for anything, you're already not going quickly, so at that point it really doesn't matter what kind of string you're using, it just matters if the string you're using will always work would be my argument. Let me rotate you out. Axe in two turns. Torleaf. Oh, man. Well, wait. Honestly, that question of, like, which string should we use has never really been a serious one in any of the jobs I've worked in. It's always been either it doesn't matter or make sure to use Unicode. Just get out of there. You're going to die in one hit. And most of the time I've used Unicode stuff has just been for like launchers and patchers and things like that where it absolutely matters because somebody's always going to have like some side relic text inside of their path or something so that's what I was worried about right there. Well, I guess we've got to swap somebody in. We'll swap you in. Yeah, I think I think like having ASCII text is kind of a relic at this point in a lot of languages like they don't even really support ASCII text right they just have strings of some of some mystical type so asking a question basically says like I'm doing some low-level string operation at that point you should probably stop yourself and be like 
Why why am I doing a low level string operation? And most of the times I believe you're probably not doing it right if you're doing any string operations unless you're working on something obviously where that matters like you're doing some crazy database parsing or some regex gobbledygook or you know something something non not that you would just do on like a Wednesday afternoon for for some task it would be something very specific where you're like no strings mean this and this is what they have to mean. Yeah, so we lost all of our dogs, which is just amazing. But we didn't lose any of our people, which is actually very good. Zakara leveled up. Why is Zakara... Alright, yeah, I was like, what happened? I was seeing a 77 for his... Uh... Oh, that's because he has Dextrous. Well, he might lose Dextrous. Damn, that would suck. Well, we'll just level him up. And everybody else... Yeah, we got some pretty bad injuries on this crew right now. I'm trying to think of a good reason to just support ASCII. I mean, the only reason I can think of would be, you know, you're inputting stuff into a database, you don't want weird characters or something like that. It's a shitty, shitty explanation. Why would you just support ASCII? I mean, because... I, I can't think of a reason why you'd only support asking. I'm I'm trying. The only reasons I can really think of are non non reasons. Fucking Eulenberg is gone again. Shit! How many times does Eulenberg have to fucking die? Like we've killed so much crap, and Eulenberg is toasted. Once more. Well, Eulenberg can stay fucking dead. Fuck that place. They don't know how to defend anything. I honestly cannot think of a good reason to... To only support ASCII, like it would just be because you have some optimization in your code. I mean, it made a lot more sense when, you know, RAM and the rest was such a big deal, and like L1, L2 caches, and you know, a smaller width string would fit much better in a in a lower level cache, and you get you know, you know, an order of magnitude performance increase on any string lookups, and if you had any in your code, then it would really, really, really matter. I'm just not thinking about anything in a modern language where just like, oh, UTF-8 versus UTF... That's the thing with UTF-8. It's a multi-byte character encoding, so if your string doesn't use any special characters, you're not going to suffer the performance penalty of, you know, having a whole bunch of extra memory and all that other bullshit. It's just not going to happen. So, who cares? I don't know, it seems like a relic. And if you're even asking yourself that question, then it might be a professor is hung up on something that they wrote in the 80s that does not matter anymore. Let's check out their armor real quick. Nothing, nothing really good. And of course, no weapons either, right? Right. Well, maybe a hedge knight? 
just a mason, a deserter, another mason, another mason, and a noble who is bored. So we have lost yet another town, permanently. Does anybody know how the hell to end the frickin' Greenskin Invasion? Because I've killed a bunch of bunch of bastards. I have plenty of money. We can go kill something. We can go take on a really tough fight. Like, that can happen. I just don't know what the hell to do. Like, we've lost so many damn towns to these bastards. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Some orc warriors, some goblin ambushers. Well, we'll take the fight. I don't want to. They're literally just gonna shoot a torque, aren't they? Jerks. Well, we're at least gonna get one guy back. Actually, Kunivert, yeah, we'll just run the guys back that we don't need. And honestly, if that's what we're doing, if we're just running people back, we should have just put them in reserve to begin with. Wow, there's just fire and arrows everywhere trying to hit us. Interesting. Well, let's start doing some swings. What are we going against here? 29, 51. We're gonna go with the 29s. Got one of them, that's pretty good actually. 129 out of two? I'll take that at any day. This is 95% chance to misses that I have a problem with. I don't want to go any farther. Good. Well, let's see what we can do. They're, they're down to 12. It's pretty much these orc warriors that we gotta worry about. And those last guys were, like, kind of a, a step you know, a step above the rest. 
when it came to doing damage and uh, hitting everything was actually incredibly surprising. Nice shots. So what we're gonna do here is... 81... 91... Let's move up and attack all three. Yeah. Those orcs. Oh damn, they're going after archers. That was man, that was a good move. I didn't see that. Nice, nicely done. What? Well, we've got to get forward. So we're going to do it. We are just going to get forward and we're going to get some shots off of some of our injured guys because. We need to do so. Dang, those attacks. Those are rough. Well, we'll take the, the better chances to hit. We cannot move. We will wait then. Maybe we can do better later. Leaf is good. Alright. We'll just have to go with what we can actually hit, which is him. Darn it.